Hey, Minister Change. Brother Al at your service. Sin of the Saints, this podcast of truth, you is or you ain't, let's break down the facts, it's Minister Change, Minister Change. Blessings, 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 wonderful people with God, it's your boy, Minister Change, the minister that meet people where they at, and love on them like our Lord Jesus Christ does. I'd like to welcome my guest, Eric Cohen, to the Change of Life Testimonies from Sin of the Saints. What's going on, fam? Tell me how you feeling tonight. Hello and welcome from the Midwest, Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> no, I'm doing good, Brother Change. Thank you so much for having me on, brother. Hey, man, hey, man. Hey, brother, would you happen to have a favorite Bible scripture, man, that, that you like to go to, man, in time of need? Yeah, so it's Isaiah 2, Would you like to hear it? Yes, yes, most definitely, bro. Spit it out there. So it says, stop regarding man whose breath of life is in his nostrils, for why should he be esteemed? And for that, uh, that specific verse helps me to focus on what's really important. God, man, we were talking a little bit in the pre-show and I told you, uh, you know, about rejection, just mentioned it a little bit. Well, that's something I've had to face in my own life and my own walk a lot. So that verse helps me to overcome that self-rejection and focus back on God, bro. Amen. Amen. That's that's a good scripture, brother Eric. That's a good scripture. Amen. If you had to describe yourself, man, to a total stranger, brother, how would you describe yourself? Uh, a lover, man, but the good kind of lover. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, if uh, I had uh, one word, it would be a lover because I love people. Amen. Amen. Good deal, brother. Eric. Good deal, man. Hey, man, if God was to return right now, man, during this podcast, would you be going to heaven or hell, brother? Hey, bro, I know where I'd be right up in heaven. He'd know my name when he hit when I hit them gates, bro. He'd be like, Oh, that's Eric Cohen. Yeah, come on, let him in. Oh, okay. Okay, bro. That's good. That's good. That's good, man. Hey, man, what is one of the happiest childhood moments you ever had, man, that you could remember right now, whether it was a Christmas time, how ho- just any moment that you could remember, man, that, that really bring happiness to your life, man. And you still smile about it now. You know, I grew up uh and poverty addiction and neglect but there are a couple things that i remember especially with my mama we used to go to this dented can store down in mississippi and uh, i remember just going to rummage to the dented cans and going to the like you know thrift stores and yard sales with mama and that was probably some of my favorite childhood memories man hey that was good brothers those those memories those memories man become very valuable especially the older you get you can reflect on them and sometimes they give you the strength to move forward Doing yeah. the hard times in our life, brother. Hey, brother Eric, this is the testimony moment, man. This is when you share a physical, a mental uh, incarceration. This is when you share something that happened in your life and how you have overcome it and how you tend to deal with it today if you happen to go down that path, brother. This is where you give the other person hope where you tell your testimony, brother. Well, hey, man, I'll just start it off around 10 and a half years ago, and I'm going to I'll try to keep it a little brief. It's a pretty powerful testimony. But 10 and a half years okay. ago, man, I was a an avid meth addict, a very heavy meth user. You probably we wouldn't even be talking right now. I could promise you that because I'd be out trying to chase some dope. Uh, okay. Well, around 10 years ago, man, uh, I had come to grips, been to rehab five or six times. You know, my wife was done with me, kicked me out my house, man. She didn't want nothing else to do with me. And uh, around 10 years ago, November 24th, 2013, uh, was the last time I checked into rehab, man. And I've now I've got 10 years clean off of methamphetamines, which is amazing. I never thought I would escape. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll tell you what, man, through that whole experience, even that last time I got clean, the one thing I did different uh, was go to the chapel at the rehab that I was at. I went for 30 days in a row and I didn't go for the best reasons, man. They had swag. They was handing yeah. out free swag, bro. They had the little okay. crosses and like okay. a little new test. I was like, well, Hey, I want that. That's free. So okay. I went and I hit my knees every day for 30 days at the chapel, bro. I was doing it with this uh, brother named Stacy and he was kind of okay. giving me the ends on who God was. And I was trying to really take it serious this time. I wanted freedom, bro. And uh, the Lord met me where I was at, bro, right there in that rehab, right there on that floor, bro. He met me. And I wish I could say I started walking with him then, bro, but I didn't, you know, progress another seven years to about three and a half years ago. 
Okay. And uh, I was on the edge of my life, bro. I had just gotten baptized. Literally, okay. I'd just gotten baptized. I came up out of the water, bro, and I uh, I acted out upon my flesh, man, in a in a way that a man does, and it's no good, you know. Mm -hmm. And it 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 hit me in such a way that I knew if I didn't come be clean to the one I loved about what I had done, bro, that mm -hmm. I was gonna go eat a bullet. So I came home man. and I told I told my wife what happened, bro. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do. I love my wife, and to watch her break down like that, bro. To watch mm -hmm. the woman you love have tears in her eyes like that, bro, it hurts. Yes, yes. You know, and so it put me at an all-time low. She kicked my butt out, if you could imagine. You know, she was done with yeah, me. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. No reason not to be, bro. Uh, but anyway, I ended up spending about three and a half weeks out in my truck after that, man. I uh, stayed at a buddy's for about a week and then a couple weeks out in my truck, man. And during that time, I was about to go kill myself. I was just done with life. You know, I, uh, pretty close to pulling the trigger and just, Ending it, bro. Well, in that moment, man, I woke up one morning about the third week into this and uh, I'd been writing a poem. I always loved writing poetry uh, like Edgar Allan Poe, Robert Frost, Emily Dixon, okay. Dickinson. Yeah. Those are the people I grew yeah. up with, you know, them uh, literary poets, man. And I copied yeah. after them. I loved it, man. I love poetry growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this morning, bro, I was writing a poetry, a poem, uh, just writing it down on a piece of paper and a beat came on my YouTube, my radio. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I want you to rap this. I said, you sure, Lord? You know, I'm a 35-year-old white dude. I've never been able to rap before. You know? said, Lord, what, what, what you asking? What you asking, man? You sure? <laughs> yeah, you know, this This was not my forte or my background. But he's like, yeah, I want you to do this. And so man. I was obedient, man. I was obedient and I, I was submissive to what the Lord told me to do. And by the end of that experience, I had these goosebumps all over my body whelping up, bro. And uh the only words I could utter out of my mouth were thank you, you know, for probably yeah. five or 10 minutes straight, bro. And yeah. uh, so that led me to around that experience around three years ago, three and a half years ago. And I've been going hard for the Lord with the gift of hip hop ever since. Uh, he has Amen. anointed me and sent me forth as a weapon of his, you know, his goodwill and word, bro, to spread light in a dark place, to spread hope and darkness, bro, because that's where I came from. The testimony I have is full of brokenness and darkness, bro, but he is been kind enough to take what the enemy meant for evil and form it into something so beautiful for his glory, bro. Something that can help many, many people. All I have to do is be willing to open my mouth. Man. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. That's good. Amen. Do, do you think people, man, with addictions should be incarcerated? Or do, do you, do you think it really, do you really, you think it really helped? Or when you get, when you're incarcerated, you just at a standstill until you are free again to go back into certain environments, you know, where, where, where that trouble or that drug exists. Well, the thing is with addiction, bro, if you're wanting to use, you're going to find a way to use no matter what, you know. Uh, okay. And if you still have that heart set and the mindset that you want to be addicted to something, bro, like that meth, bro, when I wanted it, I wanted it, nothing else. I would do anything for it. And that's just who I was. That's what I did, bro. You know, mm -hmm. I was shysty. I would, I would rob my own wife three or four times to get man. some dope, bro. Rob my family to get some dope, man. It makes you do some messed up stuff. And the only way I could change, bro, it wasn't through uh, rehabs. It wasn't through prison time. It wasn't through nothing. You know, the only thing that could change me was my heart's desire. My heart's man. desire had to change, bro. I hit that low point and I knew, okay, Good that's deal. enough. I don't want to do this no more. And I really had to dig for it you know i had to really give this over to the lord because it felt impossible you know i'd been over hit my head on the wall five or six times bro going to rehab you know coming back out getting 30 mm -hmm. days clean getting 60 days clean and then going back out and using because i still didn't want to stop you know mm -hmm. and that's the honest truth of it bro yeah so, so a lot of it starts with yourself too you have to have the willpower and the strength to say hey i want to quit also is what you're saying basically yeah, absolutely, bro. You've got to be able to be willing to submit it completely, bro. You've got to know you're done. Man, man. I do 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 you think um brother Eric, do you think a person's man environment or or or, or just the way they grew up, man, or or the the you you think it kind of creates a path for them that that could cause a, a destruction as you growing up in life? Yeah, I absolutely do, bro. Uh, you know, and, and we can be genetically predisposed to addiction as well. Uh, what the Bible would probably call generational curses, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, 
And I truly mm -hmm. believe that, you know, uh, the surroundings that we're brought up in, they don't necessarily get to say who you are, but they can attribute mm -hmm. a lot to the way you see things and the way you believe until you break out of that mindset. You may be stuck in it. You know, I have dudes I did dope with, man, that are still doing dope, but they did dope with their parents, you know, like mm -hmm. they'll never escape. But then there's other dudes, you know, like they did dope with their parents, too, and they're they're free. You know, they're man. free, man. So it all starts with yourself, basically, too, with the faith. But you have to do the works. As they say, faith without works is dead. If you yeah, got the amen. faith. You got to do the work to do it. Hey, man, um, what is the best thing, man? about now being in the faith, about being a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, man? What is the good thing about having that faith and that assurance to, to know that you could depend on him? Uh, the best thing to me, bro, is his forgiveness. Uh, because my whole life, man, I spent in unforgiveness, whether it was for myself or for others. And, you know, uh, to receive that forgiveness for the things I had done, bro, and and to know that his love never changes for me, no matter what I do going forward. You know, he loves me the same now as he'll love me in 10 years with all the more mistakes I've, you know, made. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's a beautiful thing to know his forgiveness, his grace and mercy. Amen. Amen, brother Eric. That's good, brother. That's good, man. Hey, brother Eric, I want you to finish this sentence for me, man. God has always loved us. Always loved us. Give me a moment, man, in your life when, when you thought it was over with. Maybe you was faced with a situation that you know it was the love of God that came and protect you, man, and got you out of harm's way. I'd say that day in my truck, man, uh, that day in my truck was definitely a moment where God put his hand upon me and anointed me in a way that I didn't deserve or couldn't imagine. And he made it so obvious that it was him, uh, that there was nothing I could do to deny his power. Uh, you know, so that's God's goodness in my own life, bro. And there's many more times that those things have happened, but that's one of the biggest miracles, you know, and it took him doing that and opening my eyes in that way for me to understand and see him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's a good word, brother Eric. And I can see right now, I can see the glow on you right now, brother. God hey. is good. We know, <laughs> we know God is good all the time. Hey, hey. brother, what do you, what do you think about accountability, man? I mean, we have to be accountable not only to ourselves, but to each other and to our father. You know, if you have accountability in your life as a man of God or a woman of God and amongst your own sex, might I add, you know, mm -hmm. have accountability. Men should be keeping men accountable for the way they're acting, yes. behaving, you know, yes. uh, uh, whatever your uh, lustful temptations may be. I have a brother I could talk to about anything, bro. There's nothing off the Good. table. And I talk to that man so openly and honestly because I know when I admit the things I've done or admit the things I'm thinking to him and be like, Hey bro, let's pray. Or Hey bro. Hey, <laughs> you don't need to do that. That's stupid. <laughs> yeah. Whatever yeah. it might be, you know, but this man will talk to me. Ryan Upton is his name, bro. He's uh, just one of the most amazing men of God, my mentors, bro. And uh, you have to have people like that in your life that will keep you accountable for your actions. Uh, you can't walk this life alone, bro. When you start yeah. getting into your own way, that's when you start tripping <laughs> up like, oh, that wasn't a good idea. But my mom yeah. told me it was. <laughs> that's, that, that's that Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, man. Lean not on your own understanding, man, ah. but trust the Lord, and he will yeah. guide your path. Hey, man, yeah. if you could FaceTime, man, anybody in heaven, man, anybody, who would you FaceTime, man, and what question would you ask? Man, I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> man. Mm. That's a good question, bro. Uh, I usually don't one. have stomper <laughs> questions. Hold up. <laughs> Man, bro, I don't know. Maybe uh, uh maybe okay. I'd FaceTime Noah, bro, and ask him FaceTime what it was Noah. like to get all them animals up in that ark. <laughs> like, okay. Dang, bro, that had to yeah, be crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely, bro. Most definitely. Most definitely, man. That 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 most definitely be a good one. I hey, love brother, that. Man. Brought... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead, brother. No, no, go ahead, bro. I was going to say, I love that you brought that up, man, because it brings up an aspect that we don't think about often. And that's the people that we don't think we'll see in heaven, man. I have a song called Visions Out, and it says, I hear okay. the sounds of Tupac. Could it be lucky me? He gave his life to King, G O D, the one that frees. And, you know, Ooh. it talks about these people that, hey, Tupac might be up in heaven. Rocking hard, bro, yeah, with the yeah, Lord. Yeah, yeah. He might have gave his life to Jesus like the thief on the cross, bro. 
Yeah, you know, we don't know. Yeah, you're right, man. Amen, amen, brother. That's good. We don't know. And that's why it's good that we give our life over to the Lord Jesus Christ so we can have that 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 insurance to know where we are going, man. Now, uh, brother, brother Eric, man, in high school, man, was you the pimp? Was you the cool dude? Well, was you the bully, man? Or was you the guy that got that got pushed around or what? Or was you doing the pushing around? Ah, uh, bro. So or was you the school, ladies, man? <laughs> high school was rough for me, bro. I was uh I was what I would call an outcast. I lived on the fringes of society. I told you I grew up in poverty and neglect. Well, that transferred over to what I wore, uh, mm -hmm. how I acted, the mentality I had. You know, it was so uh at one point, bro, in ninth grade, I actually kind of dropped out, man. And okay. uh, the kids were calling me Columbine at this point because they thought I was going to come shoot up the school. That was literally my name, Trenchcoat Mafia, Columbine. You know, kids can wow. be cruel. Yeah, uh, you are. know, we don't know the power of our own words or the power of words of others until we're older and we understand that. And now you can see it prevalently. You know, the power yeah. of somebody else's words inflicted upon somebody else. Yes, most definitely, you know? man. Most but, definitely. Yeah. And that, yeah. And that's what I tell people because I remember there were some times in school that I got teased and my mom would be like, well, you need to go to school. You're going in there. You're going to learn to get your education, but you don't understand what I have to deal with when I'm going through those doors. So it's kind of hard to learn and stay focused. And like you said, bro, most definitely, man, kids can be cruel, man. So and, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. So we just got to um, just just try to maintain, man, and just think about a lot of stuff in life and just thank the Lord that we survived it because a lot of people didn't survive, bro. What what, yeah. what, what, what we have survived, man. Do you think, man, um, physical, well, I ain't going to say physical, but more mental illness, man. What what do you think some programs or how can we, 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 we attack or get people together? You think we need more brotherhood, more love? How can we kind of curb some of this mental illness, man? A lot of people deal, is dealing with mental illness now. And I have, I, I've even dealt with depression sometime at a point in my life, man. And the way I got over it was talking to other people, like you said. But but what do you think could be a good thing? Give, give a little word of advice on that, bro. Man, so mental illness hits home for me because it's something I've struggled with and since I was seven. I was diagnosed, my first diagnosis at seven, ADHD. And uh, from there, it was a ride. You know, I've been diagnosed bipolar, uh, have anxiety, depression, um, borderline personality disorder, all these different diagnoses. I used to take three and a half years ago before I got baptized, bro, I was taking seven medications a day uh, mm -hmm. for the psych meds I was on. And okay. uh, I actually, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, but I gave them all up cold turkey and I gave it to the Lord. And all those, although I'm still afflicted uh, sometimes with the mental illnesses that I, I have, which are depression, you know, like some yeah. of those things are real, like, but uh, what I don't like or what I don't feel is okay for my half, my behalf, bro, is I didn't mm -hmm. want to medicate it anymore. I wanted to feel. I grew up my whole life medicated, bro, and, and stuck in a state where I couldn't feel. And uh, I just want to feel, bro. And sometimes feeling is difficult, but I know that uh, if I have brothers and sisters to talk to, for one, uh, if I have a direct relationship with the one above, bro, uh, he can give us relief. And uh, we have people to bounce the craziness off of on this earth, bro. So, yeah. you know, mental illness is difficult. And uh, there's no easy way to combat it. You know, it may be something that we're afflicted with our whole life. Uh, but mm -hmm. as uh, the Lord told Paul, man, he says, my grace is sufficient. And his grace is sufficient for us, too. Yes. Yes. Man. Amen. Amen. Hey, that's a good word right there, Brother Eric, man. Woo. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you most definitely, boy, the the the, the Lord lose the, the the Lord most definitely using that vessel, brother. Amen, <laughs> amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good word, brother Eric. Hey, man, what's a positive word of encouragement, man? You could give to anybody right now, man, that's feeling hopeless, that want to give up, just don't know which way to go, man. They might be homeless, or or just just a positive word to let them know that this too shall come to pass. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Uh, keep your heart toward God. You know, these things that we suffer through, uh, the things that we go through, these adversities that are meant to take us out and kill us, uh, God can and will use those for his glory. Your testimony, uh, the things you've been through can literally save somebody else's life. So uh, don't think that you're suffering for nothing. Don't think that God doesn't see and don't think that God is distant because he's right there with you. 
uh, holding up your arms when you get tired, uh, giving you comfort when you think you can't take another step. He's right there with you. Focus your eyes on him. Submit. Be obedient. Get back up, and he's going to take care of you. Amen. Amen. Woo. Good word, brother Eric. Good word, brother. Good word. Good word. Hey, brother, right now we're going to talk about your gifts, man, and tell people about your music. And then I want you to make sure you give them some emails, some handles. So if somebody want to get with brother Eric and say, hey, man, I want to drop a song with him, man. He jamming, man. You get people some handles and some contact info, brother. Yeah, so you can find me on any platforms uh, under Eric Cohen. Uh, It's just my God-given name. The Lord told me to keep my name. He says, Eric means ruler and Cohen biblically in Hebrew, it means priest. So he made me a ruler and a priest. He said, I want you to change your name. I said, all right, Lord. Uh, But you can find me under Eric Cohen on Spotify, Apple Music, all the streaming platforms. Facebook, you can find me under Eric Cohen. Insta, you can find me under Eric Cohen Music. And everywhere else, you can find me as me. No. (laughs) (laughs) Are you sure? No, (laughs) that's you? It's not me, it's me. (laughs) Okay, there you go. Okay. Hey, brother, man, this this has been a good, uh, man, a, a lovely interview, man, and we pray that God, this interview, reach somebody, man, and change their life. Because there's a lot of people hurting out there, man. And like I tell a lot of men, I cry. Never be afraid to cry. I'm a mm-hmm. man, I cry. I'm 100%, but like I tell them, never let those emotions, because them hidden emotions, them deep pains, that's what destroys you. Never on, be bro. afraid to cry, man. I tell them all the time, I cry. They be looking like, man, you cry. Yes, I cry. I cried the other day. I thought about my mama that passed away. There's things. I'm a human. God give us this emotion of tears for a reason. It's to release some of them inner pains that we are going through. Hey, brother, I just want to say, man, it's, it's been it's been real, man. It's been a good interview, brother. I want to pray us out of this thing, man. And we, I just I'm gonna keep hugging you in prayer, man. And hopefully that we can connect one day, and in the in the real realm of everything, and just let God use us to change lives, because that's what we're here for, brother. So if you could uh, please bow your head, brother, and I'm gonna pray us out of here. Father God, we know that. You are the ruler of all, God. You know our past, our present, and our future, God. God, we know that everything that happens in this realm doesn't happen without your hands, Jesus. I just pray that you give my brother Eric the strength just to keep moving, God. I I pray that you keep giving me the strength to keep moving, God. We know that nothing on this earth is perfect. We are not perfect, God. But we just want you to continue guiding us and giving us the strength to overcome any trials and tribulations that we are faced with. We trust you. In our mighty Lord Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen, amen. All right, brothers. Well, blessing, brothers. Good interview. Have a a great one, brother. Hey, you too, brother. Thank you. All right. Peace. Let me take you to a vision, see inside my mind Lead you on a journey, revealing to the blind What you waiting on? Looking for a sign? Let's talk about eternity, get ready for a ride Welcome to the gates, St. Peter sits and waits Father's on the way, does Jesus know your name? Did you call Jehovah Jireh? Great I am consumed by fire Cleansing like the freedom, Father, only one who takes you high Apparently we knew the truth, the hold of salvation Stepping through the open gates, complete appreciation Bowing down, I hit the ground, I'm in complete prostration Glory to the Holy One, the maker of creation Back up, back up on my feet, dancing in the street Pick the gold and precious stones, immortal how was give a beat I look around and all I see are promises to truth I seek a spoken word as I have heard, sign and seal the mind to keep Walking on the streets of gold Cause heaven is my home Streets of gold It's where I belong I'll be walking on the streets of gold Cause heaven is my home In my mind, keeping no momentum. Like, on this age, you dance and raise your guitars, play by Jimmy Page. Hendrix on the other side, man, my mind is blown away. Behind the mic and in the lights, spitting flames and crowd the lights. Rhythm move, feet collide across the floor, I start to slide. Hear the sounds of Tupac, couldn't bleed. Lucky me, he gave his life to King. GOD, the one that frees, dancing in the streets. Bricks of gold are underneath the way is paved with names of saints. On my way, I move my feet, my eyes are fixed in front of me. What do I see? What could it be? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John walking down the street. Stop and pause just because my mind is racing overdrive. Jaws dropped, I'm in awe, finally feel like I'm alive Here we go, see the spark, colors come, I see the light Sorrows seem to fade away, no more tears and no more strife Walking on the streets of gold Cause heaven is my home Streets of gold
streets where I belong I'll be walking on the streets of gold Cause that one is my home, yeah Streets of gold It's where I belong Wait, whoa, do you hear the words I say? Finally free, no more disease Made it to eternity, internally Digesting what's in front of me, tasting sweet as honey In every answer that we seek, I look upon the trees Leaves are floating in the breeze, across the valley see the seas Like a picture, I just cheese, frozen in the moment What can I do, what can I say, I was lost, now I am found Heavens are in front of me, come upon a throne See the tassels of his robe, made of solid gold See the maker of our souls, what a sight do we behold Tears are running uncontrolled, one who opened all the scrolls Great Jehovah, we extol Throw my hands in celebration, in the heavens elevation Overjoyed, I feel elated, for this moment I have waited all my life I'm finally free, worshiping the Holy King, the great Messiah. Do you see heaven's praise and we decree? I'll be walking, I'll be walking, I'll be walking with my father. Yeah, yeah. I'll be walking, I'll be walking with my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Walking on the streets of gold. Cause that one is my home, yeah. Streets of gold. It's where I belong. I'll be walking on the streets of gold. Heaven is my home, yeah Streets of gold It's where I belong Six, five, five. 